Welcome to Redstone class. Today we're going to cover the basics of redstone torches. This is the exciting part of redstone, and it's where redstone becomes incredibly powerful. We're going to go over three basic principles of their behavior, how they power things and how you can power them, what they're used for, and then there will be some homework. I'm not going to show you everything you can do with them, there's just too much to cover in one video, but we're going to go through a few of the basics for beginners. So principle number one is that a redstone torch turns off when you power it. So you can see this dust right here. As soon as I flick this lever and it provides power, it's going to turn this redstone torch off. Notice that this has nothing to do with other torches. We're only talking about regular redstone torches. So when it is off, it is on. And when it is on, it is off. This is called a signal inverter. It basically inverts the signal. So the second principle is that there's a one tick delay. So this is a tenth of a second that it takes from the time that you power it for it to turn off. And this might not be noticeable, but it will be noticeable if you do multiples because it takes one tick for this power to turn this torch off, but it takes one tick for this torch to, to power this, which takes one more tick to turn this one off, which takes one more tick to turn this one on and off. So when I do this, you will see when I hit the lever, they do not turn on and off at the same time because this one takes two more ticks, two more tenths of a second. And so you can do this. So if you did 10 of these, it would take you a whole second. So the third principle is torch burnout. So if you turn a torch on and off too many times very quickly, it will burn out. So if I were to take this signal and power it to itself, Now you can see it burned out, and it will stay burned out until something changes nearby. So for example, if I were to place a block here, it would do it again. And if I break the block, it would do it again. Anytime anything changes here, nearby it, it's going to burn out. And so this can actually be used to generate a clock or blinker where if you have four torches that are constantly burning out, they will take turns burning out and updating each other so that they continue. And so if I remove this torch from the bottom so that they can all be on, you will see that they take turns blinking and burning out and updating each other and blinking and burning out. And it will cause a perpetual on and off signal. And so we can power something with a signal like that. It's kind of neat. Now that noise might get annoying, so you maybe you don't use these, but this is something we used to use in the old days. You could keep it far enough away that you couldn't hear it. But that causes it to go on and off. So those are the three principles. To go over them, it inverts the signal, so whatever you power it with, it will do the opposite. And then it can burn out, and we have a one tick delay. So those are the three things to know. So let's talk about how you power a redstone torch. So a redstone torch is powered by powering the block it's on. So if I were to put a signal into a block like so, this block is now powered, so this torch is now off. So now, let's look at right here. There's a bunch of transparent blocks that we've talked about in previous videos that don't transmit redstone. You can put redstone torches on them, but because these blocks don't transmit redstone, that means that when we power them, nothing happens. Contrast that with this regular block right here, this regular plank block. And so any regular block, if you power it from below, it will turn them off. But that's not true for these blocks. These blocks are not blocks that can transmit a redstone signal. This is stairs, no matter what shape you put it on. So now let's talk about how they power things. So they can power things from above to the side, or they can be placed underneath the block. Notice that below doesn't mean anything. You can't put any block directly on a redstone torch unless you were to do it like this, I guess. And so what's happening right here is this is powering this block in a different way than it powers regularly. And so whereas this one wouldn't be powered, this one is being powered because it's above. And I've actually got a setup right here to show you how what that looks like. So if I come over here, this is a bunch of redstone lamps. And so I want you to guess, if I put a torch down, what's going to happen here? 
how many of these are going to be lit up if I place it on the top of this block. So it's going to power these. And why does it power that far up? Well, the answer is just like a pressure plate causes redstone to power downward, like this, where it's powering the block it's on top of so that that block can power any redstone that's next to it. In the same way, redstone torches power upward. So this dirt block is powered in a way that makes it act like it's a redstone block. So it will power everything next to it. So I'm going to break this sign. This is one's going to be lit up too because this block right here is being powered. So if I remove this block, all those go off. And that's because, quite simply, it was being used as a redstone component. Now don't let that overwhelm you. That can be a little bit abstract. But look at it and think about it for a second. This redstone torch is not powering these in the same way it's powering this one. There's a different way that it powers blocks that are above it. So like over here, when you power it from below, it becomes powered. So that's not true right here. So if I had redstone dust here, that doesn't do anything. So just like if you put your hand over a flame of a candle next to putting it beside the candle, that's going to be the difference. Is So it's a lot hotter on top. That's an easy way to remember it. And so redstone torches, it's kind of an imaginary way of thinking about it, but that's one way of thinking about it, is that it's going to nicely power the things that are next to it that's warm, but above it, this it's going to turn the block above it into a redstone block of its own, which is going to power it even further, unless it's one of these blocks. So if we were to take a glass block, or just like the air block didn't do anything, put a glass block here, it's not going to do anything. And so that's something to understand, is the way it powers on top is different. And it's not going to power the block that it's attached to. So if I were to put, let's put um, this here. So if I were to power it on the side, this block would be off because it doesn't power its own block, not naturally. And we saw at the very beginning what happens if it does power its own block, which is that it doesn't get happy. It'll burn out. And so it won't naturally, and I can do this to update it, but you will see that it does not want to power its own block. So that one's not powered, now that one's not powered. So one final thing before we end. So the ability of a redstone torch to turn on and off based on whether something is off or on to invert its signal not only allows you to chain it like this, where we are powering and so it's off and so it's on, but we can also combine them and make logic. And this makes the three components of logic in computers. And this is why redstone can be so overwhelming to people and why it is so powerful. We're, I'm just going to show you two right now. So this is an OR gate. And all that means is that this is an object that demonstrates a behavior that we call OR. And it works just like the word OR in an English sentence. So if either of these levers are on, this is going to be on. That makes probably perfect sense to you. It's very simple. So if they're both on, it'll work. If only one's on, it'll work. It doesn't matter which one. And if they're both off, it's off. That's or. Torches allow us to make logic like this. This is and, which means that we've set this up so that it will only be on if two our signals are both on at the same time. And so the way we're doing this is by using the magic of inverters. And so what we're doing is we have a torch here that is being powered, and so it is off. And the only way for it to come on is for it not to be powered, using two inverters right here where we turn this one off and this one off. And if this one is off and this one is off, then this one will turn on. And so only under one co a combination of the four possible combinations will that light up. So if this one's off, it won't work, and if that one's off, it won't work. Or an AND function like opposites in logic, and we will explain that later in future videos. Um, it's something that takes a bit of time to explain, and right now I want you to focus on the basics. So, speaking of focusing on the basics, let's go do some homework. So what I want you to do is I want you to take what you've learned, I hope you were following along, if you haven't, go through and try and make some of these, and I want you to make a loop. 
I want you to make a loop that doesn't burn out. I want you to do something like this, where we loop this around, but make it so that it is slow enough that it doesn't burn out. That's your homework assignment. I'll show you one last thing, which didn't quite get to earlier, and that's that you can actually st stack torches. Torches can be stacked. And so that's a neat thing where they can be chained to each other. And so you can actually use them for making redstone go vertically. And it's a little bit slow, but it does allow you to make things vertical. So that's a fun little thing that we can do with the inverter is we can make a constant in chain that go goes upward. All right. So that's it for this video. Be sure to do the homework. I'll have that as the next video. And that's it. Class is dismissed.